On December 26, 2024, China showed off its newest military aviation endeavor. The result is those interested in geopolitical affairs are abuzz with speculation that it might be the world's first flight of a sixth generation fighter aircraft. I, however, firmly disagree with this speculation, and I'll outline why from a few perspectives. But firstly, let's discuss what actually defines a sixth generation fighter aircraft. The whole generational thing started as a marketing campaign by Lockheed Martin when they were producing the F-22. However, despite its origin, it proved to be a useful shorthand, not to describe an aircraft's age, but its capability. This is because as time and technology progresses, it allows for certain and very noticeable shifts in design. The first generation from World War I to World War II were propeller aircraft like the P-51 or the Zero that fought with guns. With the advent of the jet engine, this allowed designers to build much faster aircraft that could carry more payload, like the F-86 or MiG-15. Jet engines and understanding in aerodynamics improved, and so did technology. This meant that the third generation of aircraft entered the scene, like the F-4 Phantom or MiG-25. They were defined as being larger, as they needed room to mount complex sensors and computers, as well as even more payload. And the reason for this is missiles allowed for the capability to outrange the opponent, especially in an era defined by guns. Then the fourth generation came about with the introduction of the F-14 and F-15. They were defined by continuing the development path for their third generation counterparts. But were leagues ahead as they moved from vacuum tube analog systems to transistor based digital computers. This allowed for much more rapid technological evolution, drinking upgrade timelines from once in a generation to once a year, since software could be reinstalled with needed improvements. Additionally, maneuverability was once again a priority, as it was shown that tactics and countermeasures meant that the possibility of a merge is ever present. With the fifth generation, it once again doubled down on advanced sensors, beyond visual range combat, and close in maneuverability. The problem, however, is even with the technological and kinematic advantage against other fighters, other fighters were still dangerous enough that they posed a significant threat if the first missile failed to take them out. Secondly, ground defenses were becoming more and more potent, as capable radars, more powerful missiles, and the potential for networking was recognized. For this reason, 5th generation aircraft like the F-22 and F-35 introduced supercruise for even more of a kinematic advantage sensor fusion to improve pilot situational awareness and reduce workload, and all aspects stealth so the aircraft can observe for opportunities and maneuver into advantageous positions to exploit those opportunities. Now it should be noted, these aren't hard and set rules. Aircraft often can and do blur the lines between generations. The F-4 for example was upgraded in some countries to include the newer APG-66 that the F-16 was introduced with. And likewise, more and more 4th generation aircraft are adopting more potent sensor suites that also include sensor fusion, much like the 5th generation counterparts. So again, it's a useful shorthand, but try not to think of it as being a set of rigid requirements. The idea is to differentiate aircraft based on the changes in design philosophy as allowed by technological advances. With that in mind, what defines 6th generation? Well, so far it's been features such as variable bypass racial engines, no tail planes, all aspect stealth, sensor fusion, and the ability to be optionally manned. Yeah, that's not a very compelling list considering tailless fighters have existed since the third generation. All aspect stealth defined the fifth generation, sensor fusion was introduced by the fifth generation and brought to the fourth generation via upgrade packages and variable bypass engines were cut feature that should have been on the F-22 and F-35, but were omitted due to cost overruns. In my personal opinion, there's nothing to really define the 6th generation. If anything, it's simply a continuation or doubling down on the 5th. So the idea of China, or even the US for that matter, fielding a 6th generation aircraft isn't really practical as nothing defines the 6th generation. Okay, but that's a rather semantic point of view. Let's look at it from a more practical point of view. Well, China has been mass producing the J-20A for a few years now. But currently they have over 300 J-20s, and they continue to not only produce them, but they are continuing to invest research and development into upgrading them. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to continue to invest in a premier frontline aircraft if you're producing a premier frontline aircraft to replace it. And this is even more driven home by the fact that China is developing the J-35. This takes me to my next point. 
let's inspect this from a technical perspective. This aircraft is massive. It easily dwarfs the J-20, which itself is designed for combat over extended ranges. It makes aircraft like the F-35 or F-16 look like little RC aircraft. There's even speculation it has three engines due to the dorsal intake on the top. The size coupled with the tailless design alone tells me this is not a fighter aircraft. The WS-10s are already producing somewhere in the ballpark of 30,000 pounds of thrust and afterburner. So that's about 90,000 pounds of thrust from all three engines, assuming they retain their afterburners. That is an absurd amount of thrust, even for an aircraft that large. I suspect then that the engines do not have an afterburner and instead rely on dry thrust only, which doesn't make sense for a fighter. Additionally, the intake on the top of the fuselage tells me it's not intended to endure much angle of attack, as that intake would literally starve for air, stalling that engine. Its size alone massively hurts maneuverability, which despite what people may think, is becoming more and more relevant as mergers have been increasing lately. Coupled with that is the lack of vertical tail, which means there is no way to stabilize or maneuver in the yaw axis during moments of high angles of attack. And so far I've explained all my reasons why not only does this not make sense as a 6th generation fighter, it doesn't make sense as a fighter at all. Uh, so what does it make sense for? I personally believe this is a strike bomber. The tailless design, the lack of bubble canopy, and the reluctance to use afterburner implies it's optimized for cruising and low observability, particularly in suboptimal frequencies outside of the X-band. The design offers a huge amount of room for fuel and payload as well, meaning it could carry massive amounts of ordnance over an exceptionally long range. This is perfect for striking targets in the second island chain. Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Guam, Australia, and so on are going to experience yet even more pressure by this aircraft, in addition to the vast amounts of missiles the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force has. And this will be compounded even further by China's newer bomber, the H-20. Another reason I suspect this is a bomber is because the United States Defense Intelligence Agency stated in 2019 that China is developing two bomber aircraft, a medium range and a long range bomber. This aircraft slots perfectly into what we know about the JHXX program, as previous snippets of it have been seen and attributed to the Aviation Industry Cooperation of China, which Chengdu is a part of, and is also the producer of the J-20 chase plane. It also slides perfectly into China's overarching doctrine of access denial. As I've stated on this channel before, the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force's rocket stockpiles are immense, but they're likely to be expended quickly in the event of a war. For that reason, a tactical strike aircraft and a strategic bomber makes perfect sense into this doctrine. So to wrap up this video, I suspect the new aircraft is not a 6th generation fighter, nor a fighter at all. I believe this is the JHXX program beginning its testing stage to field an aircraft more akin to the FB-22, F-117, F-111, and so on. The reason for this is to further enable China's area denial by striking land and naval targets out to the second chain. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy your dance with the angels.